Greetings, seekers of wisdom and truth. Welcome to our channel, the sanctuary for exploration into spirituality, personal growth, and consciousness. Subscribe to journey with us further into these profound realms. Today we delve into the enigmatic world of the human brain, viewed through the lens of the ancient Indian concept, Maya, and the cutting-edge theories of quantum physics. Together, we will traverse this unique intersection of spirituality and science, challenging our perceptions and understanding of reality. Embark on this journey with us as we delve into the mysteries of the mind and the cosmos. The human brain, a complex organ yet, it presents us with a paradox. This three-pound mass of jelly comprising 70% water and a cocktail of organic chemicals is the seat of our consciousness. But how does it engage in the sublime act of thinking? This question has puzzled philosophers, scientists, and spiritual seekers for centuries. Imagine a world where the physical and non-physical realms are not separate but intertwined. This is the world of quantum physics, where matter and mind coexist, not as distinct entities, but as expressions of a unified field. Yet, this concept is not new. It echoes the ancient Indian philosophy of Maya, which posits that the world as we perceive it, including our brain, is an illusion. The brain, according to traditional neuroscience, is synonymous with the mind. It's where our thoughts, emotions, and experiences originate. But here's the paradox. How can a physical entity like the brain give rise to non-material aspects such as consciousness or thoughts? This conundrum, often expressed as, what is mind? No matter. What is matter? Never mind, highlights the enigma of the brain and consciousness. The quantum field, an invisible field of energy and information, could hold the key to this mystery. Early quantum theorists traced consciousness back to the quantum field, proposing it as the source of everything, space, time, matter, and energy. This perspective challenges the traditional view that our brain is the sole originator of our consciousness. But linking the quantum field to the mind presents a formidable challenge. Despite advancements in research tracing smell, vision, and touch to quantum processes, the nature of experience remains unexplained at the quantum level. Unraveling the mechanics of the brain does not necessarily lead to understanding conscious experience. It's like a player piano in a Stone Age tribe, a complex machinery producing music, but the tribe unable to comprehend the source of the melody. This gap between physical matter and consciousness is where quantum theory and Maya intersect. They propose that our experiences are not fixed realities, but possibilities, emerging from a field of potentiality. This perspective, if embraced, could transform our understanding of the brain, consciousness, and ultimately our reality. Quantum theory traces consciousness to a singular source, the quantum field. This field is a boundless, omnipresent entity, a fertile ground where everything sprouts, time, space, matter, and energy. It's like the invisible canvas on which the universe paints its grand spectacle, the silent stage where life performs its dramatic play. Yet the quantum field is not just the backdrop, but the lead actor itself. It gives rise to particles and waves, the basic building blocks of the physical world. But these particles are not ordinary physical things. They exist as possibilities, not fixed entities or facts. It's like Schrodinger's famous cat that is neither alive nor dead until observed. The quantum field, thus, is a realm of infinite possibilities, where certainty is replaced by probability. This quantum soup, however, is not separate from us. It's not out there, but in here, woven into the very fabric of our consciousness. But how does a field of possibilities connect with the human mind? That's a question that has baffled scientists and philosophers alike. The brain, as per traditional neuroscience, is often seen as synonymous with the mind. But is it? Is consciousness just a byproduct of the intricate dance of neurons in our brain? Or is there something more profound at play? The quantum field theory suggests that our senses, thoughts, and experiences may not originate in the physical brain as we believe. Instead, they might be rooted in the quantum field itself. The brain, in this view, is merely a receiver, a decoding device that translates the quantum information into our conscious experience. But this view brings a significant challenge. 
If our experiences don't originate in the physical world, then what is the basis of our reality? Are we living in an illusion? This is where the ancient concept of Maya comes into play, suggesting that the world as we perceive it is not the ultimate reality, but a grand illusion. The brain as we know it might be an illusion, as Maya suggests. This idea may sound radical, but it's a possibility that quantum theory and Eastern philosophy invite us to consider. The truth might be stranger than fiction, and the journey to uncover it is indeed a fascinating one. While neuroscience paints a certain picture of the brain, Maya offers a different perspective. Neuroscience, with its advanced imaging techniques like fMRI, has correlated brain activity with thoughts, emotions, and sensations. It has mapped out the brain, detailing the machinery that gives rise to our experiences. But is this the complete picture? Imagine a Stone Age tribe stumbling upon a player piano. They see the keys moving and hear the music, but they don't see anyone playing it. They might conclude that the piano itself is generating the music. This is akin to how neuroscience views the brain. It sees the machinery in action, the neurons firing, the synapses transmitting signals. But it doesn't see the player, the consciousness that animates the brain. The brain, despite possessing machinery corresponding to thoughts and sensations, doesn't compose our experiences. It's more of a receiver tuned into the frequency of consciousness, the true composer of our experiences. Neuroscience, in focusing solely on the piano, misses the player entirely. It's like trying to understand a movie by studying the DVD player. This brings us to the concept of Maya, the ancient Indian philosophy that posits the world as an illusion. By this logic, the brain too is an illusion. Not in the sense that it doesn't exist, but in the sense that it's not what it appears to be. It's not the origin of our thoughts, emotions, or consciousness. It's just the hardware, the receiver of these experiences. Like the keys on a player piano, the brain's machinery moves in response to the tune of consciousness. This doesn't make the brain any less real or important. It's an essential part of our human experience, allowing us to interact with the physical world. But it's not the whole story. The brain is a piece of the puzzle, not the entire picture. This brings us to a profound realization. The brain itself might be an illusion. Not in the sense that it doesn't exist, but in the sense that it's not the origin of our experiences. It's a player in the grand orchestra of existence, but it's not the conductor. The conductor, the true origin of our experiences, is something far more profound, far more mysterious. It's consciousness, the quantum field, the source of everything. And this perspective aligns with the principles of Maya and quantum mechanics, bringing us one step closer to understanding the true nature of our existence. The quantum field and Maya, seemingly different, share profound similarities. Let's dive into the heart of this intriguing connection. The concept of Maya suggests that our perceived reality is merely an illusion, this aligns with the quantum revolution which posits that elementary particles are not physical entities per se, but rather possibilities. Just imagine for a moment the smallest, most fundamental building blocks of our universe are not concrete, tangible things, but mere possibilities. This challenges our very perception of reality. It leads us to question whether the world we perceive through our senses is indeed real, or if it's simply an illusion a construct of our minds. Now, let's bring the mind into the mix. The mind, much like matter, is also not a fixed entity. It's fluid, ever-changing, full of potential, just like the quantum field. It's not confined to the physical boundaries of the brain, as traditional neuroscience suggests. Instead, it's a part of the quantum field, an integral part of the universe. This perspective is a radical departure from the conventional understanding. It suggests that our experiences, our thoughts, our very consciousness don't originate from the physical brain. Instead, they emerge from the quantum field, the same field that gives rise to matter, space, and time. This is where Maya and the quantum field converge. They both challenge the idea that our senses, our experiences, originate in the physical world. They both propose that the brain, as we understand it, is an illusion. It's not the source of our thoughts and experiences, but merely a conduit, 
a tool for interaction with the physical world. This convergence of Maya and quantum theory offers a revolutionary perspective. It invites us to see ourselves not as separate entities interacting with an external world but as integral parts of a unified, interconnected quantum field. It challenges our perception of reality, urging us to look beyond the physical, beyond the observable, and delve into the realm of possibilities. This convergence of Maya and quantum theory challenges our perception of reality. Erwin Schrödinger, a pioneer of quantum theory, found resonance in the wisdom of the Upanishads. He was captivated by their profound assertion that the ultimate reality is one, and this oneness is identical to our own self. This notion is a radical departure from the dualistic thinking that often dominates our perception of reality, where we separate the observer and the observed, the thinker and the thought, the brain and the mind. Schrodinger's fascination with the Upanishads was not a mere philosophical indulgence. It was an echo of the quantum revolution's underlying theme, the idea that the observer and the observed are not separate but intertwined in a cosmic dance of possibilities. This understanding challenges our conventional view of the brain as a distinct, concrete entity. Instead, it nudges us towards a more fluid conception, where the brain and the mind are expressions of the same quantum field the same oneness. This perspective aligns with the concept of Maya, which suggests that our experiences of the physical world, including our perception of the brain, are illusory. It's not that these experiences are unreal or false, rather they are projections, manifestations of the quantum field, the source of all possibilities. In the words of Schrodinger, the plurality that we perceive is only an appearance, it is not real. In the seamless connection between mind and brain, we discover our wholeness, as Maya and the quantum field suggest. Until next time, continue to question, explore, and grow.